Hi, I'm David, and I'm here to ask or address this question. Is there a God? I mean, really? Just in case you were wondering. So, this came up for me when I was uh, You see, I blog. You see, I'm in recovery from depression, as I like to say, and um, I've been blogging about issues of faith and depression for the last several months. And you know, faith, depression, how they intersect, and the relationship between the two, and um, how it gets complicated sometimes. I got a, I got some feedback. I got a like from someone. Yeah, uh, hey, it does happen sometimes. Why do you look surprised? <laughs> some people actually like it. Okay, so I got a like, and um, I went to check out his blog, and um, we we exchanged a little bit with each other, and offered what I thought would be some encouragement, saying that in my religion, there's a confession that says our purpose is to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. And to me, that means God is for our recovery, not against it. No, I just meant it to be like some encouragement to keep searching to find the light, because when you have a depressed brain, it it just tends to gravitate towards darkness. And his response was something like, well, that's great for you, but there is no God. Everybody knows that. All these Christians around the world believe that they have the one true faith. So do all the Muslims. And you can't prove either one is right or wrong. So it's all BS. And... Everyone knows that. They're just afraid to admit it because they're just desperate for meaning. So, so it's all made up. Uh, that's kind of the gist of it. And uh, I was like, okay, um, apparently this wasn't received the way I intended it. So um, what to do now? I just, <laughs> I just said, hey, man, look, whatever you believe, I don't care. You know, just this is where I find my light. You find something that gives light to you so that you don't keep gravitating into that black hole that, you know, that's just kind of a black hole that seems perfect an analogy for a depression sometimes. Now, I, I wanna be clear first too, I'm not bringing this up to, um, belittle him or um, say that this is all stupid and obviously wrong. No, 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 I know. I don't have any quarrel with any, um, any honest atheist. You know, I don't expect anyone to believe something that doesn't resonate with them. This resonates with me, maybe it doesn't with you. Okay, that's fine. But this response, though, I, I sat with it for a while, and I thought, you know, this does not sound like the well-thought-out, honest atheism of, say, uh, Christopher Hutchins or Stephen Hawking or Madeline Murray O'Hare. It sounds like the voice of the elevator. Now, um... What is the elevator, you ask? Um, are you thinking of the Prince song, Let's Go Crazy? Yeah, well, that's where I got it from. The depressed brain. Let me tell you something about it, if you're not familiar with it. There is a voice. When you, when you have depression, there is a voice in your head that talks to you. And it talks very negatively, very darkly, and paints everything in the worst possible light, you know, and it will say things like, well, everyone's voice 
if you have that voice, yours is probably a little, everyone's is a little different, probably, but mine, it would be like, um, God doesn't love you. God has abandoned you. Um, God doesn't hear you. Pray. You pray and pray and pray. God doesn't hear you. It's not doing you any good, so just give it up. You are like, you've been rejected, like the, uh, salt that has lost its saltiness and is now only good to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Um, so that, now that's, I'm not, I'm telling you too, that's not the voice of truth, that's the voice of that little voice in here that, and one thing about this voice, you can't believe what it tells you and you have to talk back to it. Give it a name. I'm calling mine D Elevator. As in, are we gonna let D Elevator bring us down? Oh no, let's go crazy. Yes. Sometimes you gotta go crazy to keep from going crazy, right? Okay, so D Elevator. That's the what I call my little voice in here. I give it that give it a name so I can talk back to it. And you know, with me, it never quite went to, there is no God. Um, it was kind of like, instinctively, he knew he couldn't go there with me. Because, you know, I'm already too much convinced of it. To be convinced for him, as soon as he said it, I know he's lying. But, those other things I talked about, there have been times in my life, um, yeah, I was ready to believe all of that. And so... You know, and I'm bringing this up just to say that the things this, um, this uh, other person said to me, like I said, it didn't sound like a well-thought-out atheism. It sounded like the voice in here, the elevator. That's what I call mine. What do you call yours? If you've got that voice, give it a name so you can talk back to it and say you're a liar and you're the father of lies. You were a liar from the beginning. So, but, okay, now I can say that, but you can just as easily say, how do you know? Um, you haven't really proven anything. So is there a God? I mean, really? Well, Here's the thing. I don't think this is, most of the time when people ask this question, this isn't really the question they want to know. What they want to know is, Right, I don't know how much clearly this is showing up on the camera, but I think the real question you're, you're really asking is, is there something beyond all this? I mean, really. And, and you see this, this is, this is why we can't, we can't even at this point ask about is there a God? Just is there something beyond all this, beyond the material universe that we're living in that is subject to decay and death and everyone is going to die, but after they die, is there something we go to? Is there something 
while we're living here that we're connected to that's eternal and not dark but light and peace and joy that something that gives our lives meaning something beyond all this that we are somehow connected to something that won't decay never decay never die something you know and for example in buddhism there's no formal belief in god there but they definitely believe there is something beyond all this so um to start with i think we have, we have to take the question back to here is there something beyond all this and interestingly i think the answer was in my little atheist friend or my little depressed friend i'm not sure which something he said that i think gives us the answer and I'll get to that right now. So Buddhism, for example, does not have any formal belief in God, and yet um, they definitely believe there is something beyond all this. They call it Nirvana. Awesome band, man! Yeah! Well, yes, they were, but... <laughs> Uh, that, that's another matter entirely. Um, Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, spelled the same as the band, if that helps. But they definitely believe there is something beyond all this. Something beyond the decay, the death the, that we're all part of. That The futility to which all creation has been subjected to, as Paul said. Yes, they would say there is something beyond all this. So you don't even have to believe in God to believe that. That's the point I'm making there. Now, um, this is, now, this So, I want to start, start to get to an answer about this. Um, not saying I can prove anything, but I think there is significant evidence. And, ironically, it's hiding right in something. My little atheist friend or depressed friend, um, whatever. Whichever he is. Um, maybe both. Uh, Something hiding right in his statement that where he was refuting me that says, yes, there is something beyond all this. And that's what's coming up. <laughs>